AI is everywhere. AI. 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 AI is AI. AI. But have you noticed that AI today is also a complete mess? So I can generate some text in Notion. That's cool, I guess. Can I give it some data in a file to recap? Nope. For that, I need to use ChatGPT. Well, not ChatGPT, but I need ChatGPT+. Plus, if I need to search the web, I need Microsoft Copilot, which is inside Bing, which was formerly known as Bing Chat, which in reality is GPT-4 Turbo. Cool. Can you recap me a YouTube video? Well, no. <laughs> Come on, don't be silly. For that, you have to use Gemini Advanced, powered by Gemini 1.5, formerly known as Gemini Ultra, formerly known as Bard, which integrates with YouTube because it's owned by Google. <sighs> AI today is a chaotic mess of annoying pop-ups that ask you to please, please try our latest AI feature. Random chatbots and assistant popping up everywhere in every app you use. And most of this is, well, totally useless. Because you see, there are four key issues with the wild state of AI today. But not all hope is lost, because there is a solution. And no, don't worry, it's not another AI gadget. But first, we have to understand why everything is becoming a chatbot. It seems like today, if your app doesn't have a chatbot with AI, it's not a part of the cool kids anymore. Google is adding a chatbot to their search app. After being a meme for 10 years, Bing is now back in the search game with, well, a chatbot. And new ones like Perplexity AI are springing up everywhere. But it's not just search, it's everything. Your presentation tool now has a chatbot. Photoshop now has a chatbot. Notion has a chatbot. FigJam has a chatbot. Shopify has a chatbot. Microsoft even wants to replace the Windows key on all new PCs with a Copilot key that brings up well, you guessed it, a chatbot. But chatbots themselves are not the problem. ChatGPT is what started it all, and it now has hundreds of millions of users. No, the real problem is that, for most things, a chatbot is not the right way of interacting with computers. Actually, it makes things worse than they were before. Let's take one of the main things that all these chatbots tell you they're amazing at, planning, a trip. This is the typical complex activity where you go to different websites and blogs and compare prices and you find the distance between hotels and attractions and an AI assistant seems to be the perfect solution here. Type what you need and get your perfect trip planned for you. Except a chatbot sucks for this. It gives you a wall of text with no images, no maps, no directions, no easy way to compare airfares. Since I still travel like a broke student, I tried giving it some pricing guidance, but it completely ignored it. And I'm not alone here. A team of researchers tested chatbots on a thousand queries for travel itineraries. And they counted how many times the chatbot actually proposed something that met all of these criteria. OpenAI's GPT-4 model performed the best of the bunch with six successful queries out of a thousand. And counterintuitively, even for things like search, a chatbot in most cases is not the right tool. The most searched question on Google is simply what to watch. And many people use search engines just as a way to open their email. As The Verge puts it, AI is the right idea, but a chatbot is the wrong interface. But sure, with the chatbot you can ask it to make a rap song about your vacation plans, I guess. So if chatbots are not the right way to interact with AI in most cases, then why are they everywhere? Well, because tech people are lazy. Sort of. When ChatGPT came out in December 2022, it took the world by storm. It was the fastest product in history to reach 100 million users, and it started the largest FOMO run in tech in the last years, where everyone scrambled. The big companies like Amazon, Meta, Google started building their own large language models, which is basically what today we call AI. And everyone else now had to have some sort of AI in their product. And what's the easiest way to do it? Step one, pay OpenAI to use one of their models like GPT-4, so you don't have to do anything yourself. Then, well, GPT-4 takes in text and spits out text. So step two, let's build the simplest thing that takes in text and spits out text, which is a chatbot. Step three, give it a nice skin, colors, and we're done. Chatbots are the easiest and quickest way to add AI to your app. Now, you've seen AI features pop up everywhere in the apps and products you use every day. But think about it. How many of these do you actually really use? My guess? Very, very few. A recent research shows that 85% of all AI projects fail. So why are companies scrambling to add chatbots and useless features? Well, they caught a virus that has been around in the tech industry for decades now. They caught the frenzy. This is an ad from 2000, at the peak of the dot-com bubble, where the internet was the cool new thing. And this is a 2024 ad for an AI gaming laptop. What is an AI gaming laptop? It's a laptop with a chatbot. These are an example of what happens in 
the frenzy. Whenever a new technology becomes mainstream, this is exactly what happens. Everyone takes this new tech and runs like crazy to add it to their product. In 2000, just adding .com to the name of your company to show that it was on the web made the stock price jump. During the last crypto rush, everything needed to be on the blockchain and have NFTs. This company, Long Island Brand Beverages, made iced tea, but they decided to swiftly change their name to Long Blockchain Corp. And now it's the turn of AI. As soon as ChatGPT hit it big, marketing people in tech companies around the world were like, <laughs> Because now there's the AI toothbrush, there's the AI pet football, there's the AI candle scent. And tech giants are not immune to this. Samsung's whole campaign for this year's Galaxy phones is Galaxy AI. Despite AI already being in Galaxy phones for years now. Because, yeah, in reality, AI has been here and you've been using it for years. Facebook has been using AI to serve you ads for the last decade. Your phone has been using AI to optimize your battery life for years. In fact, AI doesn't really mean anything. The word artificial intelligence was born in 1956. And technically, a GPT model with 100 billion parameters and your email spam filter are both a form of artificial intelligence. But ever since ChatGPT came out, AI basically means large language models. Because it's easier to say AI than transformer-based deep neural network for natural language processing. But this frenzy has created something else. It has revived a dream that has been around in tech for science fiction for decades. Jarvis, or Dream of the Omniscient Chatbot. Jarvis is the digital assistant to Tony Stark in the Iron Man movies, an all-encompassing, useful and sarcastic companion that solves every problem, and that in one movie tried to take over the world. Science fiction has always dreamed of the ultimate digital assistant. It's Jarvis in Iron Man. It's HAL in 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's stars in Interstellar. This is the original vision behind Siri, Alexa and Google Assistant. And as soon as ChatGPT exploded, the tech world got infatuated again with this idea. And I don't blame them. A large language model seems like the perfect solution to create a real-life version of Jarvis. A chatbot that finally understands complex problems and has memory. And many have been so captivated by this dream that they are focusing tons of energy and resources on actually building this. Companies like Humane with their AI pin. But as these start to be released, we are starting to see why this is all a big illusion. Look at this and tell me what company it is. The company is called Lyft. There's a gigantic problem with wanting to create the Omniscient chatbot. And that's that in order to be useful, it needs to have access to everything. Your WhatsApp messages, your inbox, your embarrassing Spotify playlist, your work documents. If the Omniscient chatbot doesn't have access to even a few of these, it loses the whole point. So say that you are a new company and you want to build a universal chatbot. You have a great large language model, but now you need to make it work with all the stuff that people actually use. So you go to Mark Zuckerberg and you ask him, hey, can my universal chatbot access WhatsApp, you know, for, for my users? Um, no. And not only that, Mark now says, wait a minute, I can build my own universal chatbot. And now Mark's chatbot, in order to be useful, needs to access your work documents, which are in Notion. Is Notion going to allow Mark's chatbot in? Nope. And Notion CEO now has a great idea. We can build a universal chatbot. And so on and so forth. You get the point. All right, so this chapter is done. Let me allocate some time to write the next one. Oh, you're wondering what this tool is? Well, this is a sponsor of this video, Akiflow. If you follow this channel, well, probably your digital life is a mess. Your multiple calendars, to-do apps, productivity apps, Notion, Linear. How do you make sense of all this? Akiflow is the ultimate productivity tool to keep your life organized in one place. The thing I love the most is that I can take a task and I can block some time for it on my calendar. I have an email here that I need to block some time to reply. And voila, I can drop it directly into my calendar and so I can just go on and plan my day in a few minutes. Akiflow is the final boss of productivity apps because you don't have to choose between one app or the other. It just integrates with everything. So I can plan my days from one single place. And if I hit Command K, I can create tasks and do everything with natural language. You can try Akiflow today with the link in the description. And if you want to learn more, you can even book a one-on-one -on -one call with the Akiflow team. Again, link in the description. And now back to the video, because even if we don't want to build the Omniscient chatbot, there is another problem here. A problem that we actually already solved more than 40 years ago, but that for some weird reason, now we have recreated. The command line problem. 
So sometimes I use Mid Journey to generate my videos thumbnails, and it's really mind blowing what it can do. But when I use it, I need something very specific. And this is where it starts. An endless back and forth of different prompts. And oh, this doesn't work. So let me try a different order of words. Oh, now I have to start reading Reddit threads and online guides. And oh, here's a Mid Journey prompting course. Wait, wasn't the whole point of AI that it's natural and intuitive to use? I'm back to reading manuals. Well, this is exactly the same problem that we had 40 years ago when computers first arrived. They were so powerful and so useful, but almost nobody could use them because the only way to interact with a computer was with this, the command line. You need to remember complex commands and flags and options, even to create a folder or open a file, and any typo results in an error. And we solve this with a graphical user interface. Icons, buttons, windows, the mouse, all of these are basically a substitute for text-based commands. Today, both on Windows and Mac, you can open the command line and do everything you do on your computer with it. But nobody does this, because it's clear that there's a better way to do things. You don't need to write a complex terminal command to see the latest Instagram story of your friends getting wasted in a club. And I think you might be getting the point already. This AI wave has brought back this exact same problem. Because ChatGPT, Midjourney, and all these AI chatbots are basically like command lines. We are back to writing text on our keyboards and getting text back. We are back to having to learn prompt and having to use guides and manuals. It's like we are back in the 1980s, but with an affordable housing now. Good design is where you don't need an instructions manual. Have you ever needed an instructions manual to figure out how to use an iPhone or Google Maps? No, that's because they are insanely well designed. We ran towards chatbots because they are easy to build. But in doing so, we have thrown everyone back in the days of command lines. And I know what you're thinking. It's so easy, let's just slap some buttons and sliders on the screen to control the chatbot. Well, this is Automatic 1111, a graphical user interface for the image model stable diffusion. And I don't know about you, but you're seeing it. And I can tell you, it's even more scary than using a chatbot. So solving this problem is gonna take a while. And so, what now? We have chatbots everywhere. We are pursuing this idea of the omniscient Jarvis assistant. And every time I use an app, I have to dismiss seven pop-ups to use their useless AI features. Is this really it? Well, no. There is a solution on the horizon, but it's a counterintuitive one. Because it's not about more AI. Actually, it's about getting rid of the AI. Making AI invisible. This is a mockup I made of Skyscanner, and you can see that instead of using a random chatbot, I created a customized trip option. So you can use the UI that you're familiar with to search for flights, but still be able to create the perfect custom flight search for you. And you know when you get those messages that you forget to reply to? Well, another thing we can do is use AI to smartly analyze the messages and remind you only of the ones that you actually need to reply to. These are all examples of invisible AI. Instead of saying, hey, look, we have a new chatbot. It's cool new AI, although you're probably never gonna use it. These take the opposite approach and start from a real problem that people have. And then apply AI to it because it just can help solve it. And if you notice, in none of these examples are we telling users, hey, there's fancy AI in here. Because I'm sorry, tech marketing people, but users don't care if there's AI or if there's Oompa Loompas writing responses to the prompts. They just care about getting their problems solved. Today we have these chatbots everywhere. But when nobody ends up using them and the AI hype train dies down, designers, engineers, and product managers will roll up their sleeves and start to build AI in a way that's truly useful. And even though we are still inside the frenzy, we're starting to see the first real examples of this. Premiere Pro, the video editing software, is adding the ability to extend your clips by a couple of seconds if you need some extra footage you're missing, and it generates those with AI. YouTube is working on adding automated AI dubbing of videos. Our browser automatically renames your tabs to make them more easily readable in less space, without you having to do anything. And this is the AI I'm truly excited about. But as it turns out, even without AI, the tech we use every day hides secrets in plain sight. Like how the iPhone icons are actually not round rectangles, or how the Spotify shuffle is not actually random. And you can learn all about it in this video right here. I'm Enrico, and I'll see you in the next one.